Cool. Hey guys. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off while the last project is taking step in. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. I'm really, really excited to be kicking off the second hackathon at the second ever Bitcoin Plus Plus. So thanks everyone for showing up. Um, we have a quick keynote from one of Austin-based uh, local VC firms, Trammel Venture Partners. Um, so Chris Calicott is going to go ahead and kick it off. I think we're having a little, maybe short discussion about projects in the space, etc. cetera. Um, then I'm going to get it back up here, do a quick um, introduction of the judges. Um, I forgot to add to my slides, we'll do that here. And talk about what the prizes are, what the judging criteria are. Then we're going to go ahead and get started giving presentations. Um, I think each person, Cody, you have a, I don't know what Cody went, three minutes, four minutes? Um, three minutes of presentation and then maybe a minute of talking. I think that'll, we got a lot of stuff to get through, so make it, you know, snappy sort of stuff. All right, great. Without further ado, uh, I'd like to welcome up Chris Calicott, or Christopher. Um, cool. And what up? Happy Sunday afternoon, everybody. Uh, and thanks for having me up uh, to say just a couple words. I'm, this is this is the th kind of thing that we actually really love to do. Venture capital firms are, by definition, not really consumer brands. So sponsoring a big conference somewhere doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us. But what makes a whole hell of a lot of sense is getting in the mix with the makers, the people that are actually tinkering, experimenting, trying stuff, figuring out what doesn't work and uh, building out things like developer tooling. And occasionally, some of those projects and hackathons can actually become real companies. And um, that's what we do is we help build companies. We, including uh, venture dollars for sure, but uh, also knowledge and experience of, of taking companies from zero revenues to um, really big companies. Um, I'm Christopher Calicott, I'm a co-founder and managing director of TVP, Travel Venture Partners, we are based here in Austin, but we invest uh, strictly up and down the Bitcoin protocol stack uh, and can invest globally. Um, but we happen to be right here in the backyard. Uh, so it's nice to meet you all today. Um, I was kind of thinking uh, earlier today about when, I, when I've given like quick little talks like this in advance of a hackathon, it's always very interesting for me just kind of as a way to take the temperature of where the Bitcoin native ecosystem is. I'm curious. I heard the names of the projects uh, that are going to be worked on. Um, I'm curious if they fit into any kind of recognizable bucket. Like, for example, if you have a project and you think that it would be sort of like developer tooling or utility that other projects might make, raise, raise your hand. I'm just kind of that's small. That's less than a, that's fewer hands than I, I was expecting. Okay, if you think what you're working on um, is a is something that would fairly Free, fairly immediately be capable of producing revenue, like a company, raise your hand. I feel like there are a lot of hands that haven't been raised. Shout out a bucket that I am obviously forgetting that uh, a lot of you fall into. Cool. Tools that might have risks are gonna play with. So developer tooling, utilities, and that kind of thing is kind of, what was my intention on was the first bucket, but I wasn't clear about it. Um, <laughs> Great. Um, so, a couple of thoughts. Um, I, I think for me, a person that tries to be very self-aware and, you know, if I live to be 149, I want to still be growing. Um, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, and we've been around for a long time, just kind of quiet and under the, under the radar a bit, um, other crypto ecosystems uh, through the, the process of creating and printing tokens uh, have had a lot of money to build like very pretty uh, graphical sort of developer tools and that sort of thing. I think if we're honest, we need more of that. So that's actually really exciting uh, to me to see those kinds of projects happen. In fact, I think there's probably an opportunity, something that's not venture investable, but something to support those initiatives necessarily. Like um, uh, my buddy, somewhere from Brinks over there, you know, we were just talking, I've had this idea for a little while, might be a chance to pool some community capital and Bitcoin terms to sponsor that, but it, I'd like for that to be a very um, well thought out, well incentivized kind of initiative because I think um, we've got uh, some catching up to do to make what's actually technically near term about to be enabled on the Bitcoin stack 
um, really easy to figure out and, and to rapidly iterate and deploy new kind of applications on. So that's that's of interest. And if you have ideas there, I'd love to talk with you one on one. Um, I would say just kind of my high level thoughts is whether you're building developer tools or a utility or you have designs on building a company with um, tens of millions in revenue, um, at the end of the day, you're producing something that someone's going to use. So that's a customer. And I always encourage people to think about, even if it's a tool, um, you know, when you're thinking about scoping and design, it, you know, for tools, they, their customers are just as important, some might say more so, uh, than individual companies. And so we always think about market sizing. You know, how big is the total market that we could attack and capture uh, and make sure that scoping and the TAM is not so narrowly defined that it's very niche -y. Uh, Because with markets, the one key thing is a lot like um, my background in poker, which is when you win, you want to make sure that you win very big because a lot of time and energy and resources go, go into setting up something that might look like a very quick win from the outside looking in. So anyway, those are my thoughts. And I thought um, we have a couple of minutes and maybe people have some questions or burning ideas that I can happy to give some color. Anybody have some thoughts or a question? Just shoot your head and right on up. Go for it. As a developer, what should I be thinking about in terms of testing? I think your, your customers are other developers probably, if I understood the city right, you're, you're building a developer tool, is that right? Uh, no, I, I'm talking about, it, but let's say I'm building a startup, mm. and I want to look interesting to investors and to customers. What am I not seeing as a developer? What should I be thinking about? This is a loaded question for me. I am not an engineer. I, I try to stay uh, conversant, but um, I think in general, Companies always do better when the entire set of business uh, groups within the organization are all kind of like, well, you know, rowing in the same way toward what a customer needs. Um, some of my near, dear friends, including my business partner, whose background is in engineering, um, a little earlier in our careers, I know he would always um, love to come up with the most engineering, elegant, most brilliant uh, technical solution to a problem that had uh, a market of like three people. Um, so, so you can have a very elegant, you know, engineering design, but making sure that you're putting all those engineering hours into something that, that meets that market need that will actually give, you know, when you start finding some revenues, you'll find more capital to grow faster and so continue validating um, that that's the right market to be building into. Um, and finding validation uh, solves an abundance of issues uh, throughout any kind of organization. And so if, if I were to say one thing that seems pretty persistent in my observation over the years is that sometimes developers can get a little too attuned to how cool it is or how elegant it is, but not necessarily how that elegance is actually working to capture a big market. Anybody else? I'm sorry? What are the top three things you're excited about within Bitcoin? Excited? I, I thought I heard accelerating in Bitcoin. Is this excited? Okay. What are you excited about? Uh, oh man. Um, uh, I'm a, a little bit of an armchair philosopher. I get really excited about the power of, uh, well, I'll say it this way. For all of the United States attempts to uh, extend our values to the world through regime change and spending dollars. Uh, a buddy of mine pointed out how in Bitcoin itself, the values of property rights, uh, you get it for free just by uh, spreading the, the word globally. I think that's happening in a lot of places. Even right here at home with like the uh, slow moving train wreck in banking, it's causing a lot of people for the first time in their lives to say, well, wait a minute, what is money? Um, you know, and I, I didn't, at no point did I put my salary into a bank somewhere uh, thinking of myself as an investor and yet this bank is belly up and I'm now a creditor uh, as though I had been an investor in the bank. And uh, those kinds of things are exciting. That plays out in a whole lot of different ways. Um, if maybe you're asking uh, technical enablements, um, I probably will be talking my book a little bit. Uh, obviously, um, senior folks from Zebedee are here in the room, uh, Fetty, is going to be a very exciting design space 
for new kinds of developments. There's just a whole lot to be excited about. And I'll, I'll give you one, you asked for three, I'll give you one other example. And this is not a specific answer, but it's it captures, I think, a lot of where we are right now in, in the Bitcoin native ecosystem. Uh, we do an annual meeting every year for our founders and our investors to come together. It's like a full day of content and people are sharing ideas, what's happening, what they're learning, what's not working, all these kinds of things. And given you know the intersection of, of Bitcoin at lightning network speeds with you know the, the finality of lightning and you know the answer to deplatforming and social media and what uh, coordination of communications is possible through Noster and how deeply embedded into Noster is the ability for we talk about micropayments you know for a decade and a half they're only actually just now possible for the first time and there's something that's infinitely more satisfying to be able to express a tiny amount of value in you know to acknowledge a, a great thought or an idea that someone had in Noster and the fact that Lightning is getting so deeply embedded into the functionality of Noster you know I, I, I'm, I'm bullish on Noster and I think they can do well there are going to be some challenges to overcome as it grows but even if Noster didn't survive that design primitive of expressing Bitcoin value and the composability with things like all, all kinds of other things and, and making that work in the communications coordination like those primitives like okay I, I, say what you like about Noster good or bad the ability to give someone some sats in recognition for something they said or they did or something they shared um, is it feels it's palpable how validated that market is I don't think that design primitive goes away and people are thinking about other ways to compose with that so I would say in, in Q1 in 2023, there's been this renewed excitement for composability, right, in Bitcoin. And meanwhile, um, a lot of other people are starting to say, well, hang on, I keep hearing about that. What, what's going on? To help that effort a little bit um, and kind of just take a look, I, I think you'd find it interesting, everybody in the room, uh, our firm, TDP, we published the first ever startup in Bitcoin capital, Bitcoin uh, venture capital research for the entire venture capital industry. Uh, we've, we're in kind of a unique position to be able to instrument this, and we released this a couple of days ago. And a lot of people that are outside of Bitcoin are going, oh, wow. You look at you know market cap dominance, which I, I recognize is a little bit of a, a forced uh, and imperfect tool, but at 42.1%, Bitcoin is market cap dominant globally against all other you know crypto assets, including stable coins, et cetera. And yet venture dollars that have gone into Bitcoin's focus startups is 1.31%. That, that is striking, and it's made people, like this morning, the head of one of the alternative investment uh, groups of the world, Kaya, actually retweeted and said, this is worth a read. Um, that's going to shake some things up, and what I'm hoping is that a lot of the large institutional investors will start saying, we don't have managers focused on Bitcoin. Um, I think TVP will get our fair share, but probably a lot of our you know friendly competitors will as well. At the end of the day, it's good for founders that are building on Bitcoin, and it's good for Bitcoin itself. So, a lot of reasons to be excited this year. Um, we have maybe time for one more question? Or? I have a question. What do you think the single biggest mistake Bitcoin is making? Um, I activated Bit300. <laughs> <laughs> that's only keys. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. It might be blasphemous to suggest that Bitcoin is going to make a mistake. I, I would say um, a couple things. Uh, we, TVP has, we know where we have edge and where we have some expertise um, in the investment world. Uh, I am definitely not qualified to suggest pros or cons of any particular bit. Uh, and so we, we have a policy never to weigh in on those or back. Uh, those kinds of uh, changes. I think Bitcoin is doing a whole lot right. It has been, it's just not really been um, understood more broadly because, look, my view is that Bitcoin's already won the battle for the Internet Space Monetary Reserve layer, full stop. If that's the case, you want to be extraordinarily methodical, purposeful to make changes in Bitcoin Core. Um, and that's certainly the approach that Bitcoin has taken. I think that was the right choice all along. Um, you know, and, and over time, there has been a, a progress made. You know, SegWit technical prereq for Lightning Network. Um, you know, uh, huh? 
Yeah. So, education, whatever, you know. Uh, you know, I would say, I, th I think some of these efforts are starting to step up right now. I think, you know, challenging, if you tell a story with words, okay, you're, a, I'm a guy with an opinion. If you tell a story with data, which is why we did what we did with this research this week, I think that's, you don't have to say much. It's like, okay, that's, these graphs are stark. Like, you know, what are we doing wrong here? Hopefully every uh, pension fund in North America asks, wait, why is this? You know, and so I'm not sure that there are mistakes on the whole. I think as long as Bitcoin does not lose its ability to have robust and vigorous debate and come to some sort of conclusion, I think I think we're in pretty good shape. But um, and I, I would I would love to say that you know just double down on the Q1 thing. It's been a long time since there's been we had a room like in our annual meeting like this palpable the, the founders were, were leaning in and are like oh my gosh and they were just spitballing ideas it was like beautiful to see and, and that's the first time and it's felt like that since the early days uh, for me and so I'm actually not going to file a complaint on Bitcoin right now I, I love where we're at. Yeah. Are you there?